Welcome to Chapter 6. This first video will be on Pause and Practice 1 using the Paradise Lake Start file. In this project, we will complete calculations for Paradise Lakes Resort using database functions, and we'll use logical functions to calculate results about employees' revenue accomplishments. Again, the file needed will be BUS120 Pause and Practice 6 1 Paradise Lake Start file. The first thing you want to do is when you start up the file, we're using Excel 2016. Go into your goals worksheet. Clicking on cell B3 under location, we're going to enter CAS apostrophe. The apostrophe is the wild card. So it will allow you to search for anything for CAS and then anything, any string or text after that. What we're going to do next is we're going to go to cell D23 and do an insert function. So cell D23, and we're going to insert a function. Now we want to choose our database function. So we're going to click on insert function. Then we say or select a category, we want to come down here and select database. We're going to scroll down into select a function to the D sum function and we'll press OK. Notice the D sum function requires a database, a field, and a criteria. It adds the numbers in the field, the column of records, and the database that match the conditions you specify. So now we have the options to select our database, our field, and our criteria. Now, from this box here, we can press F3 to open our paste names because we've named certain things previously in this file. So, we're going to choose List and press OK. You'll see now the database says the List Database. Okay, in the criteria, or in the field box, we're going to type in goal, and the criteria, we're going to select cells B2 to B3. And then we're going to press OK. So now we see the sum, right, of everyone at Cass Lakes, and it should be 37,500. Now, if we were going to say, we can do a quick double check of this. So if we go up here and we select Christopher Bowman Cass Lakes Skull, Control and press Castly here and Castly here. We can see that the average is 12,500. Three cells selected and the sum is 37,500. All right, now we can do the same thing for the average. So the average goal for Cast Lake. Clicking on this, and we're actually going to type it in this time. We're going to type in equals DAV. It'll come up with the average. Pressing tab to autocomplete. We're going to have to make a lowercase l for the database argument. And then we're going to double click our list here. We're going to type a comma. And we're going to type in the word goal, including the quotation marks. We're going to type a comma again. And then we're going to select again our cells B2 through B3, saying we want the location to be equal to CAS and anything after that. Closing our parentheses, and we can press Enter. 
Again, when we had selected those, the 15,000, the 17,500, and the 5,000, we saw that the average down here was 12,500, which is correct. Now, we're going to do the same thing to create a dmax function in cell D21. So they're saying use the function arguments dialog box. So you can do it in either way that we did previously. So I'm going to be coming up here. And then we're saying equals dm, so dmax. Copying the information from previously. Making sure we get rid of that extra parentheses. And then pressing enter. And then we have the maximum goal value for anyone from our cast lakes. So now we're going to use a function argument to build an AND function. So we're going over here to F7. We're going to click the logical button and we're going to do an AND. So logical 1. We're going to select cell D7 and then we're going to say is greater than or equal to, and then we're going to select cell C7. So we're saying what their actual goal, what their actual revenue data was compared to their goal. And then we're going to click the logical two box because we're saying it has to be and. So it's this and. These are saying what they meant both goals. And we say again D7 greater than or equal to, and in this case we're selecting cell L7, their quarterly goal. Okay, I'm going to press OK, and if both statements are true, it will return true, right? If one statement is true and one is false, it will return false. If both statements are false, it will return false as well. So then saying to recopy the cell from F7 to F8 to F19. Now notice what was happening here was because we did not make this an absolute value, right? We could do one of two things. Before we copy down, we can say this L7 is going to be an absolute value. So it's always going to reference this quarterly goal. Now when we fill down, every cell there references back to L7. Otherwise, it would just reference a blank cell, which of course would be greater than or equal to a blank zero. And so just to double check, Right, this individual here, their goal is 15,000, they only sold 13,200, so that was false. Right, individual 56,000 was greater than 42,500 was the goal, that's true. It's also greater than the quarter goal of 15,000, so it should return true. Now let's do an OR function. Right, we're going to, so to gel cell G7 here. I'm going to equal, type in equals or. Doing it manually now. We say what's the logical one first? Well, we're going to say D7 is greater than or equal to C7, comma, or D7 is greater than or equal to L7. Now we throw in the absolute self-reference there, close parentheses, and enter. So saying, is either one of those true? So let's see if there's any discrepancies here. True. So this individual here. So it looks to me that there's an error here, which we'll get to later. So now we're going to select cell H7. Right, we're going to nest an AND in an IF function. So we're going to type in equals IF, 
parentheses, and we'll see the and show up. Okay, so I'm going to say again d7 is greater than or equal to cell c7 for the logical argument 1, and then we'll go d7 is greater than or equal to l7. I'm going to put an absolute reference on that. Close that. So that's our AND function. So now, the IF statement. So we're going to do our rest of our IF statement. So it's going to say, comma, to complete the logical test argument for the IF function. We're going to say, parentheses, met, both, including the quotation mark for the if true, comma, and then parentheses no, close parentheses, for if it returns false. And then we can fill that down as well. Now we can create an ifs function. Right, if we select cell J7 now, right, we're going to do a logical and choose an ifs. So logical ifs. So multiple if statements. So the first if statement, right, we say select cell I7, I7, and if that is greater than or equal to 96 percent and then the value of true we want to type in excellent logical number two again if this is greater than or equal to and we'll say 85 percent and then we'll type in good logical test three we'll say is if i7 is greater than or equal to 95 percent and then just say logical test 3 if i7 is less than 85 percent value of true it will just type in average we'll press ok and then we see because it's above 96%, it's excellent. Now we can copy this cell, fill down to J19, and there we go. And you'll notice that there's some values divide by zeros, right, issues here. So we'll correct those now by doing an if error function. Okay, we're going to select cell I7 here. You can see the formula is equal to D7 slash C7. So we're going to delete these contents here. Okay, we're going to check the logical box here. And we're going to choose if error. Okay. And so now in the logical cell, we're going to Click cell D7 divided by cell C7 and the value of error box, right? So we want to tell the person to check the values in column C and D. Check values in column C and D, including the period. This way, if there's an error message, this will come up with the error message itself. We'll press OK. And then we'll fill this down. And you'll see now that there's some check values showing up now. So then you can say, okay, the goal was zero, so you can't divide by zero. In this instance, it, doesn't, it looks like there's a letter S in there, and so that shouldn't be in there. 
We'll check those out later. But that's the end of Pause and Practice 6-1.